All right, guys, before we jump into today's episode, we're super proud to announce that this week's episode is sponsored by Wedgwood Cove. It's an 18-hole link-style golf course, full-service bar, full-service restaurant. They have the simulator downstairs, full driving range, state-of-the-art golf carts, and they loaded up their pro shop with all the hottest brand-new gear that can get you set for this golf season. Be sure to head to WedgwoodCove.com, or we'll leave all their information in the description box down below. And then when you make your tee time, be sure to tell Donnie that Mikey Polis and Peach sent you. So with that, let's jump into today's podcast. Attention, teeing off from hole one, we have Mikey Polis and uh -huh. Peach, right in time for our tea time for another episode of Public, Public Course, Course Golf. Golf. What's up, guys? Welcome back to episode four of the Public Course Golf Podcast. We got a hot episode today. We're in the middle of, I don't know, I would say the biggest week in golf. Well, you can, when you say hot episode, we're talking 55 degrees outside, yeah, baby. baby. I'm baking like a toasted cheeser. It's so hot here. Think of the last episode we filmed. Wasn't there an active snowstorm? There was an active I think snowstorm. it was actually snowing when we filmed, yeah. which was only uh, two weeks ago. Yeah. So, <laughs> so so we went from snow to golf season. To go full on. Like yeah. Wedgwood's open. Um, we're in the middle of, this is the Saturday of the Masters, so the cut has been made, and we're in round three of the Masters. And you guys have made the cut. You made the cut. You made it to the weekend. Somehow we did too. So we limped along. I think <laughs> yeah. they they moved it kind of like they did for Tiger. Yeah. I think they. Uh, I think JT had a had a round so Tiger could make the cut. Being they yeah. moved it from two to three, but I think Masters Week is I would say arguably the the greatest week in golf. It's the biggest tournament. It's the most kind of prestigious tournament. And it, it often you know it, it aligns with Easter, and when you think about Easter, you. That you're thinking about how spring times, uh, besides, I mean, the religious part of it, <laughs> don't forget that. But <laughs> the I mean, actual meaning of The it, actual but... meaning of Easter. But, you know, when that comes around, you're thinking, oh, I can maybe go out and play and actually be outside. And, and it's not mud season. We're moving past mud season and dog poop season. And you're getting yourself ready to actually go out and enjoy the, the weather and being right. outside and, and actually playing golf and not just imagining it or being on a simulator. Oh, it's so yeah. nice. And yeah. the, obviously we love the simulators. We play, you know, between yeah. Wedgwood and the Albert Lee Golf Center. Both of them are awesome simulators, mm -hmm. but there's nothing like getting out and playing on the course. Wedgwood opened up yesterday and um, talking to somebody that had worked there, which again, as you guys saw in the ad, we're super stoked to announce our partnership with Wedgwood. They're gonna be the feature sponsor of the podcast here for a while. And we're gonna hopefully film some stuff live on, it won't be live broadcasted, but we're gonna film some stuff in in the simulator itself. We're gonna film a couple of our podcasts. So it's gonna be really cool to, to kind of partner up with them. It's our favorite course, it's our home course. So to be able to partner up with them is pretty exciting. Have that as be our sponsor, it's, it's so fitting because it's really kind of how we play. I mean, we, we play a lot of golf, but we mostly play at Wedgwood and it really is kind of what all this comes from. Yeah, I mean, so it all stems yeah. from that as our as our home course. Um, when they opened, my wife and I both worked there. Like I bartended and I we did our interview. And when we walked through the clubhouse to do our orientation, the half the clubhouse was still just studs up. I mean, it was huh. from day one we had worked there. So we played a lot of golf during. Oh, look at the storm at Augusta. Oh man. We well, have the Masters on, yeah. so just like the NCAA tournament, you might see us doing this, doing over. this over there. But but we're doing that for you guys. We'll keep you up to, if you're not able to watch the Masters today. We'll kind of keep you updated here during our episode. But and when you see the ma when you see this episode, the Masters will be done. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, we'll be. It'll be. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, Rombo takes it here. He seems like kind of the him and Brooks um, mm -hmm. are the kind of the two big dogs right we'll, now. We'll get to that later. Yeah, we'll we'll touch yeah, on we'll uh, touch on Brooks Kepka later. Right, yeah. but so yeah, back to Wedgwood. We're just super stoked to partner with them and have that, you know, as our. I mean, either way, it's just still our home course is where we play, anyways. Yeah. But it, it's kind of extra special to be able to partner up with them and and have them sponsor the podcast. If you notice, there's some fresh hats. Yeah, these are. I don't know if you've seen these before. Yeah, I, so, uh, uh, I arrived at uh, I arrived at this uh, oasis here where we do our podcasts and. Um, there was a lot of fun surprises uh, waiting for me, so uh, you know. You'll have to let us. You'll have to yeah. let us know if you guys like these. Yeah. So there we got PJs right there. Is the same as this. Here. There we go. Yeah. 
So we got kind of the higher higher cut. Um, yep, higher crown. Higher crown, and it's almost like the five panel because there isn't the seam in the middle. Yep. So it's yeah, it's just a five panel um, with the braided rope. So we have the the rectangle script patch on that one, and then we have the same hat but with our our round logo, uh, the PCG Public Course Golf. Everybody welcome. And so we have that same hat, and it's really not like it's not a regular. Hat. No, it's like a you could sweat in it. Yeah, it's I got mean, like it's, a sweat band. So a Paul, so a ninety-seven percent poly, three percent spandex, a, or two percent, three percent spandex, and one hundred percent wonderful. Yeah, baby. So two hundred percent is made of. So it's, <laughs> that's that's the special part. It's a two hundred percent hat right here. <laughs> <laughs> so then we got the the old uh, red and blue braided on the bottom, and go, then for go twins for Masters Week. Of course, we had to make sure we had the green one with our PCG. So this is PJ's hat right here. And then mine is just a kind of a black snapback um, with our patch on it. So you'll have to drop in the comments if these are intriguing to anybody else. If they're not, that's fine because we're going to just wear them. But yeah, well, I think people, if they were, if these were in a store, I think people would buy them even if they didn't even know what public course golf was. Those they are... just would look at them and say, yeah. I, I mean, can... it's the, the patches are sweet. Our logo, we had Taylor. Uh, she designed it. I'm gonna leave her Instagram in the description box below as well. She's done a lot of logo work for me outside of you know doing this for us, but she did the Mikey Polis stuff. She did my paddleboard logo. She did my golf the golf logo I did for Mikey Polis. She's done all that and she does awesome work. And she's also a local. Yeah, I mean and started she, here. So she's yeah. I think she lives. She lived. No, I won't say that. I won't yeah, say she, lives. Where she lives. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, she was from Albert Lee as well. Um, so I've known her for a while, and she does great work. So again, thank you to her for doing this. And we're gonna leave you linked in the description. So if you need any creative work done, logo design work, be sure to check her out. So we're gonna kind of jump right into the Masters again. We were on the weekend, so we made it to the weekend. We made it for the first two. I mean, the first two rounds took forever. Well, with I, the weather delays. I but. wish we did. You know, I don't know if you have you seen. This is probably something people do, and I think that I, I've often I've been a part of one before where you do like a, a fantasy draft with golf. Yeah, the Masters. We, yeah, we we should have done something like that. I think that's a lot of fun to do, where you get to pick. You know, you get five golfers, or or you get you know, it's a snake draft or something, and you get different guys. Yeah, you get to choose and then put some money in. Um, but I think some of the some of the main leaders are ones you might put money on are up near the top. Um, John Rahm's always a favorite for a lot of people. Um, being up near the top right now. He bogeyed his 18th hole yesterday, which put him two shots back. He would have just been one shot back, I think, of Brooks Kepka. So did so, he? Did Rom play his last nine this morning? I, I don't Because they had because a they huge had a, weather delay yesterday. Um, like There was actually two uh, pine trees came yeah. down, like almost into the gallery of people. And I know he was, I think he, I don't know if he played nine or 10. Like Tiger had only played nine, so I, they must have finished their their second round this morning. But it even we were watching them warm up at the range, and it is a mess. Yeah, everybody's in rain gear. It's very not high like of wind. It's, they should have it up in Minnesota right now because it's like fifty six degrees and and the very, snow is gone. We were talking about Wedgwood. Um, by the way, I you know when you I got a Wedgwood Cove. Uh, sh this is this is an older model. Um, but I gotta get some of that. Head yeah. to the pro shop. They're the loaded shop. up. Donnie and Angie loaded the pro shop with some super, super nice. I'm gonna just stop there before uh, I go home today. Just, I know, right? Just, Load up. Just, they got yeah. Travis Matthew. They have some sweet Titleist hats. Our Cove hat. Um, Where's that? Oh, it's upstairs. It's, up yeah. it's the one I wore last time. Yeah. Uh, they have new colors of those. Oh. And they adjusted them slightly, but they still say Cove up top. Nice. I walked through and I talked to both. The last episode I filmed for my Mikey Polis channel, I played a little dice um, random club game down at the simulator. So I talked to Donnie and Angie for a while and we walked through the the pro shop and yeah, they have some really, really cool That's stuff. Awesome. Sweatshirts awesome. and so we're definitely gonna be loading up on some gear for that. Coming back from Disney, I know that, uh, you know, I'm used to, I'm, right now I'm in the, in the mode of spending money, so. Keep uh, it going. Just keep it going. Why stop now, right? <laughs> Why stop now? So yeah, look at round three is going to be starting today. They moved the cut, you were saying, from, I know it was two and it moved to three, right? Yeah, because uh, Tiger was, um, of course, you know, all all eyes are on Tiger, which the, as they should be. So a lot of the, you know, whether he makes the cut or not, it's a big story. So it was on ESPN. It said that in order for Tiger to make the cut, Justin Thomas, they had to finish plus four. 
and they did. Oh. And that moved the cut to plus three. To plus three. So that allowed Tiger to get it. So we were we were thinking maybe Tiger paid somebody. Right. No. Paid JT a little money. Yeah. I, th I was listening to Tiger's caddy was talking, and he said if there was anything other than Augusta or Masters Week, there's no chance he's playing just with you know his legs still very, very limiting. I think that obviously limits his shot. And, but it's always fun to see Tiger into the weekend, and hopefully he can make a – it's going to be a big push because what's – Rom and Kepka are what no, ten and twelve. 10 and 12 under. Yeah, and then I think it's after that it's Hovland is near there. And that and that Bennett, the, ben, yeah, Bennett. the amateur, yeah, S Bennett. He's the first. first name is. <laughs> Sam? Sam, I think it's not he's, Stetson. <laughs> <laughs> he's the first amateur to be in the top five, alone in the top five going into the cut of the Masters. I mean, he's so he's third. I think he's seven or eight under right now. Yeah, as an amateur, that's insane. Not kidding. That's cool. I I I. So <clears throat> we were talking, you know, the Masters here, and I not not to hockey and golf don't, you know, this apples and oranges, but um, I was listening to the radio and they were talking about, how, you know, the Gophers, Minnesota Golden Gophers, are in the national championship tonight, tonight baby. against Quinnipiac, and um, how about about how many Division One hockey teams are in Minnesota, and how they feel about the Gophers? Like, do you root for the Gophers? Like if you're a UMD Bulldog fan or an MSU Mavericks fan, do you which remind me to talk about the Mavericks here in a second? Yeah. Do do you do you say to yourself, I'm going to root for the Gophers because it's from, it's a hometown team, or am I so you know I, I imagine you know the state of hockey like this, there's people that are so gung ho about their own team. Yeah. Do they do they say to themselves, I'm going to root for Quinnipiac because I cannot stand to see the most hated team that I you know you know rivalry or whatever else it is if you're st cloud state you say there's no way i root for the gophers or do you say no nope, minnesota we all get on the board we're all wearing maroon and gold today we want um the state of hockey to be represented and to win the title so it's kind of comparing that to golf do you say to yourself um do you root for um do you root for i was going to say with this now hold on a second you compare live and yeah yeah do you do you, do you root for just good golf? Do you, do you say to yourself, I want Brooks Kepka to play well um, because you put aside the fact that he's a live golf player or do you, uh, do you root for uh, an American to win just because you want an American, you know, um, being from America, do you say, I, I'm all in, whoever it is, whether they're a live golf player or they're a player I really don't like that much, but I'm still going to be all in. Um, what do you do? I mean, cause like I'm, I'm an MSU Maverick fan cause we live near Mankato, uh, but I'm also a Gopher fan, yeah. and I'm going to be super stoked for the Gophers tonight. And when they play each other, I'm kind of half and half. I really don't have an allegiance to either one, but I would be all in for the Gophers. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, there are some people that are super fans of another team, and there's no way they'd vote for them or they'd root for them. So, like, with golf today, do you say, Brooks is having a great round. We want him to win. Or do we say, no, there's no way I'm rooting for live golf. I want someone from the PGA to, to be there. You know, regardless of how anybody plays, even if Brooks Kepka has the round of his life, or he breaks a record, or he hits a hole in one, I don't care. I'm not happy for him. Like I, I think there's, especially in this situation, I think Brooks is such a polarizing figure, like we were talking about before. Yeah. Um, I feel like in golf, you get more of the, especially now, it's it's either I feel like people either love the live tour or they very much despise it. And you but know, at what point do they do you just say the heck with it? I mean, is it always going to be that way? I'm I mean, sure. I think it's because it's yeah. so new. Yeah, you know, it's such a new thing. I mean, they've really struggled with their ratings and stuff. I'll be curious how long that is. You have a lot of money. Yeah, you know, they're backed by a lot of money. But it'll be interesting to see how long it sticks around. You know, it's the same thing with the NFL. You look at how many times the XFL has been sold and bought and sold and bought and played yeah. three games and canceled seasons and went bankrupt and. Um, I mean, it's, there's always going to be, you know, if it's not live and, and maybe that doesn't last, I'm sure there'll be something else. Somebody always wants to challenge kind of the the norm, which is the PGA. But I feel like golf, you're going to, I think it'll come down to taking out maybe like American versus, you know, a European player. Um, I think it'll come down to people wanting PGA, over PGA live. versus live. Do I you think, think all Because this... the PGA is such a melting pot. Oh. He round three bogeyed his first hole. Tiger Woods. Uh, oh. Now he's plus four. But oh boy, he was plus three before, so he made the cut. But now he's back to plus four. 
Phil, negative, yeah, negative five. five. So I was reading, speaking of live and, and PGA. And polarizing figures. Yeah, there's, Phil I heard when he was at like a, like there was a, a dinner or something the for Masters the Masters champion. And he just didn't talk. He, like sat he, sat, at, he sat at the end of the table and was super quiet the whole time. So is this good? It might be good for golf in that, you know, people like rivalries and they like, they like to, are you, are people paying more attention because there's the live side of things? I'm would sure they, a little bit. Would they not, would somebody who's just like a random, like, oh, golf's on, or they, then they hear, hear about, they're not like, oh, I love this player no matter what. They're just, uh, just like watching golf. Yeah. Are they like more tuned in because Tiger's playing? That's one thing. He made the cut. And also because it's like team live, team PGA, and you're, you got more in intrigue about who that is. Yeah, maybe it increases ratings. I don't know. I'm I'm sure it does. Uh, I think it just adds that extra flair to to golf. That you know, I mean, you get diehard golf fans, or you know, like I said, we said early in the podcast that the Masters Week is kind of the. I mean, that's the Mac Daddy of all tournaments. That's the biggest week in golf. I mean, it's. I think you get those guys that are, you know, have either been to Augusta or just, you know, they live, breathe golf. Um, they'll watch it no matter what, but. I think Liv does add a little bit of flair. I'm not a big fan of it. No. And the funny thing is with Phil, is he, when they first talked about Liv, he was so against it, you know, being where the money's coming from and yeah. and supposedly the some of the stuff behind that money. You know, I can't yeah. speak factually to it. I don't no. know. But, and to what extent, I don't know. Yeah. But, I mean, he was very against it. And then they said, well, how about we'll give you $200 million. And, and he was it. like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's yeah. fine, yeah. Which... Well, even like, you, you, were saying, you were saying, thing. you were saying, like, you know, a lot of these guys are just willing to say, "I'm here for the money," and that's why I think if the live golf people seem to be polarizing people in of themselves, like right. not a lot of, like, they're not always well liked to begin with. If there was no live golf, so right. it's hard to root for it when you have that type of clientele over there. Yeah, um, I'm not saying all of them are that way, but Brooks Kepka is not a really uh, he's kind of a polarizing figure. Patrick Reed, polarizing right. figure. One Even, one guy I'm surprised is not over there is uh, uh, he's a lefty. Um, uh, he's not well liked. Um, he's got a mullet. Uh, what's his name? Oh, lefty mullet. Yeah, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's lefty with a kind of a mullet. No, it's Bubba Watson. Oh, people yeah. don't like him either. Is he on live? Oh, let's look. Because. It seems like people who are polarizing, even Phil, people like him. People also don't like him. I, I think it's not doing much for his career as as far as how he looks to be with Live Golf either. I mean, m money goes only so far. How much, how much money is enough money? Really? Ah, Bubba Watson, current tour is Live, yeah. which makes sense. People, the one yeah. I'm very surprised about is Cam Smith. Yeah, he's he was such cool. a quiet, very quiet. Still, one of my favorite golfers. That dude is. That and he seems like a cool dude. We were watching the PGA memes that Travis does, some house tours of some of the golfers, and he did one with Cam before he went to live. And he just seems like a cool dude, and he's a heck of a golfer. Yeah, but so it's not like you say it's not everybody. But you think I don't know, like don't don't take all. Maybe that's I just going. We were talking about money and and. You know, I'm a I'm a teacher, so I mean, I do enough to get by. But it's like, how 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 much money is enough money, and is it really about like, is it only about the money? Like you were saying, who was who was saying that it was about money? Um, I forget I forget the the golfer on on live, but he did an interview before the Masters, and he was talking about you get a lot of the live golfers will say they they went to live to practice and execute and further their golf game. And he's like, every single one of them is a liar, myself included, is the only reason they went there is to pad their pockets. I mean, yeah. you look at, they offered Tiger $800 million to go, and he said no. I mean, that's the example of, I mean, Tiger Woods yeah. is essentially one of the greatest golfers of all time, the face of the PGA, the face of golf overall, well, I, I would say. When he, cha he changed the way people watched, I mean, he kind of popularized it again. I mean, it was, He's done. He's a pioneer for it. Yeah. Really. I mean. Let's take a brief break in today's episode to hear from today's sponsor, Wedgwood Cove. 
Wedgwood's an 18-hole championship-style Lynx golf course located in Elbert Lee, Minnesota. It offers a full driving range, the 18-hole uh, Lynx-style golf course. There's a little bit of maturity on one corner, but otherwise it's all open Lynx-style championship length. Just shy of 7,000 yards. It's got a full-service bar, restaurant, banquet facility, and they loaded up their pro shop with all the hottest brand new gear that can get you set for this golf season. Well, you know, there's loyal, loyalty and commitment in golf. I was thinking about, you know, people who play public courses and private courses, it doesn't matter. Um, people who play any type of golf course, there's a lot of loyalty and a lot of commitment to golf. I mean, people use it as a time to for socializing and then they also do it to work on their game and there's a lot of patience and commitment to what's happening. You know, you can't get too mad because otherwise you'll, you'll just quit. You can't get too excited when you play really well because the next shot's gonna be bad probably. Yeah, right. Um, but, that loyalty factor to the game, just even in of itself to play golf, like when you're saying Tiger turned down that money and others have turned down the money, there's loyalty to the game. Yeah. And so I think that shows through because how much money is enough money and how much is it that you want to keep intact what is important about the game? Right. And so I, th that takes a lot. I mean, they're still getting paid a lot to be in the PGA, but it does take a lot of to say no to that money. Like $800 yeah. million. Dollars. I mean, that's I mean, that's setting you, I mean, and Tiger, kind of excluding Tiger, you know, I mean, that dude is, has enough money to last generations for his, you know, Charlie, yeah. and, and then Charlie's gonna be probably the same type of figure. Um, maybe not to the same polarizing level and golf changing level as Tiger. Yeah. But I think that Charlie's still gonna be, I mean, a dude a 14 and yeah. he's, I mean, when your dad's Tiger Woods, well, it's like LeBron James and Bronny James. I mean, it's in your blood. You're right. You got you got practice. You're you're privy to th experiences that others aren't to help further your game at a yeah. younger age. Right. Mm -hmm. And even if you're maybe not quite like I don't think Bronny's obviously to the level that LeBron was. No. You know, at the, at that age. No. No. But, because when LeBron, that was a huge. I, I mean, that was like the school. first thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, he was. They were comparing him. You know, on the level of like Michael Jordan changed basketball when yeah. he yeah. came into the league. And wasn't he the last one for the high school? Did they not? They banned the high school, get into high school. For LeBron. The, yeah, was he the last one? Yeah, I think he was the last where age. You could draft out of high school. Because now they can they can forego college and play in the G League. There's yeah. like the G League Ignite, or you know, so many of these kids are going overseas, and yeah. there's a lot of crazy options for. But it's I mean, not strictly out of high school. Like no, you can't. You can't graduate like, high school. Like Farragut Academy with uh, Kim Garnett. Yeah, the big ticket. You're right. Yeah, you can't do that anymore. No. But I don't know. It's. I mean, staying on again. This is kind of off the the public course golf stuff. But looking at talking about some of these college athletes and the transfer portal. <laughs> that. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the transfer portal? Uh, well, it's it's a me first. So. It's a societal thing. So I, I, I feel like if it doesn't work for me right now, then I'm gonna to try to make it work for, work for me right now. There's not like, oh, I'm, I'm not the starter and I'm not gonna to work towards being the starter. I'm gonna just transfer where I can go be the starter. Yeah. Or um, I only went to this place for this coach and now that coach is gone. So I'm gonna transfer because I can't work with anybody else. I, I feel like that's, I feel like it could be bad in the end. I feel like it's it's playing into the me first. If it doesn't work for me, I'm not going to do it. I'm not willing to to, to fail or or to have uh, take risks. Yeah, I'm going to do what's safe always. And I feel like that that's a more character problem that's yeah. going to breed itself into society later on. I don't know if the transfer portal is so big right now. Twenty years from now, does that what what type of people are going to be? Because not everybody's going to be a pro. Right. Not everybody's you know. Like they say on those commercials, you know, people who are in athletics, they're, they become doctors. They become pro in something else, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of character qualities are they going to have if they just transfer and go wherever they feel like it's going to make them serve themselves and not for an instant, instantaneous? You know, our phones, electronics all play into that too. Like oh, yeah. what's going to happen later on? What kind of people are they going to be when that happens? I do understand you you got a scholarship, you want to play sports, you want to be able to um, be a starter and have the playing time and the experience, but what else What else is it about playing behind somebody too and learning to work with people and staying true and loyal to what you're doing? 
you know, loyalty, I don't know if that's going to be as big of a character quality anymore. I don't even think it really is now. I mean, you yeah. look at, there's a handful of college players, like Drew Timmy for Gonzaga mm -hmm. is a perfect example of it. And there's certainly situations, you know, Dawson Garcia has bounced around. But he but that came was back for, for thing. family Same issues. Yeah, yeah. And so now he stayed. Like, Jameson Battle, that one absolutely drives me nuts. So he, the Gophers is what, his third school in four years. He graduates, says he's going to go pro. So he's gonna, he has a year left of eligibility. He's from Minnesota. He's friends with Ben Johnson. But then the NIL money from Ohio State comes knocking on your door. And then all of a sudden now, instead of trying to go pro, he's going to play as a graduate transfer at Ohio State. But is he even going to be good enough to be on their team? I mean, Jimison Battle is a good player. He's going to ride the bench there. I mean, he's, he's, he is a great player. But he's not a pro player in the NBA. He's no, a, he's a pro player in, in the overseas. Yeah, yeah and I mean, he'll go overseas and probably make a good lifestyle for himself and his family and, but and there play again, for a while. But there again, like sports are about it's not a it's not an individual sport. How people mesh as a team is half the battle. People are even like the, with the Timberwolves. They're like, well, how do we even know how good we are? We even had Cat and Gobert play together all the time. Right. Like you got to so then you just keep transferring. You're never getting that cohesion with the other teammates. So how really can you become the best? You're right. not. You you're can't. Not, you, you you can't do that. No, especially unless you're one of those guys that has such top tier, out of this world talent that wherever you go, your team's going to be good. Yeah. You know, it's a rare exception to find that. But unless you have that, like you look at these guys, like Jameson Battle, he played half the year this year. Yeah. And you know him and Dawson Garcia barely played together. Yeah. We don't and even it's know like, what it oh, we be. didn't we didn't have a great year, so we're going to go to Ohio State. Well, guess what? The Gophers beat Ohio State this year, so now yeah. Battle's going to go to Ohio State. Probably not play as much because they probably got better recruits coming in than we do. So Just it's the, and we're not going to have good recruits coming in if we keep losing guys, right? And and with MSU, we probably are going to talk about that when Coach Hastings left. And Hastings is a great coach to go to Wisconsin. Lot. Yeah, I know, but he, he probably is getting paid a lot. More. I bet he is getting. I bet they gave him a blank check. They yeah. back the truck up and say, what do you need? Give and, me what you want. And he's going to a bigger program. I I can see how it's not like him going two years, a great success, moving on. He was with Mankato for a while. And turned him into something special. Yeah. So I understand the the leaving. It's always hard, you know, being yeah. Minnesota. You see somebody go to Wisconsin. It's a little bit different, I would say, with hockey. Kind of like we talked about earlier. You got so many D1 programs here. Mm -hmm. It's not just like, a, you know, you look at like football. Mm hmm you have like the Gophers, and now, shockingly enough, St. Thomas is going to end up moving into kind of that category. But yeah. you have the Gophers. Mm -hmm. It's like your D1, when you look at your Division One school, you have the Gophers. Yeah. And so, like, you compare the Gophers football to Wisconsin football. It's these two big rivalries. Hockey, you have a lot of lot of stuff to choose from in the state so it's not they're still going to get good recruits a, i think they're oh, still going to be they're still going to get good recruits in msu but it's going to take a little bit of a hit because a lot of those players are in transfer portal now um gosh there's like been five or six msu guys that now are playing and they made their debuts in the nhl just recently yeah and so it's really cool to see that program st and, and i hope that that they keep that strong even though their you know their main coach left and that right. people really liked him but i think he's established that as to be one of those schools like with st cloud state doesn't matter who the coach is they're still they'll gonna, be good their yeah. pedigree's yeah. strong enough yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're you know back, taking it back to golf it's like you want to see good good players you want to see people looking out for their family with money but you also want to see that loyalty like you to sports too and sometimes that, that is worth something not that athletes choose to be role models but because of the pedestal they're put on and how they're pedestalized and by everybody all the time you you deep down at least as a fan you want to say that that person's a good person right because then you then you then you makes you feel even better about rooting for them right. it's, it's hard for me to get beyond that and say oh i'm just in it just watching for their athletic ability or whatever they can do it's like you want them to be good people too so right. with kepka I don't know how good of a person he is based upon how he's portrayed. Maybe he's a great person and is just being portrayed wrong. Right. Um, he's a facade on TV. Yeah. I, we don't know for sure, but it'd be nice to see that amateur go up or you'd like to see, you know, Rom just because. Rombo seems like such a good dude that yeah. it, it'd be cool to see him pull through and take it. And, but it would be fun to see the amateur. And it would be cool to see, I don't think it's even possible, but it would be cool to see Tiger make another 
red shirt run on a Sunday, you know, which would always be fun <laughs> to watch. But well, you know, speaking of amateurs, public courses, that's that's you and I. We're amateurs. Maybe we can be on this. Right? <laughs> yeah, we'll try. We're gonna we're gonna enter our handicapping for next year. <laughs> but you know what'll get us what'll get us into maybe making the cut next year is our putting game. And oh. you know how we work on our putting game? With is this week's episode of Tic Tac Toe. Oh, welcome back. If this is the first time you're watching an episode of Public Course Golf, Peach and I like to end every single episode by playing a little round of tic-tac-toe. And if you have watched, you would notice we stepped our game up a little bit. Not quite the painter's tape on the floor, <laughs> no. but bought a little uh, putting, putting surface. I made a little uh, tic-tac-toe board out of it. Some of the sizes we went, some of the easier ones I made a little bit bigger and I made some of the back ones a little bit smaller, make it a little bit harder. If it's gonna come down to one of these, it's not gonna be just a big, uh, you know, a big easy way of dropping it in. A little more finesse. So we're gonna jump back in. Our series is at 1-1, one, because one, we didn't yep. play week one. So we've each won a round. So now, here's round four of Tic-Tac-Toe. Stop, stop. <laughs> Does that count if it's on the line? I mean, we've, we've done everything else on the line. Okay. So of majority, I'd say that one. Right? Here's Mike's shot. And wow, you, that's that, there you go. The big dog up front. That's how he rolls. That's too hard. <laughs> that's going to be on. All right, so yeah, now you can. Terrible spot though. Yeah, it doesn't help you out at all. No. But you made it so I can't get a tic-tac-toe up there. Right. So now I can I can only go for the center. See? That's not hard enough. Oh, it is. Oh, whoa, you blocked me there. No, I cannot. Oh, I gotta, gotta block go you. up and down. But I need that one. So I got two I can go for. So quick game update. I can go here or here. These are me. And then PJ pretty much has just here left. I mean, that would guy. That's more in this one. Yeah. Nice one. Oh! oh! I thought that was good. Oh, if that would have rolled over that ridge, we would have been beat. Oh! That's good. Ooh, middle. So now I got so many opportunities here, but the bummer is, is I gotta stop you, cause I got here, here, and here. Ooh. Oh! Oh! Look at that. All right. Well, game number three goes to PJ. Let's give him a golf clap, everybody. Congrats, PJ. Thank you. Good work. So yeah. he's up two one. Feels good. So we'll uh, hopefully I'll try and tie up the series here with episode. Well, that'll be episode five. So which feels good. Um, so thanks so much for tuning in to today's episode, guys. Thank you to Wedgwood for sponsoring the channel and sponsoring today's episode. Be sure to check them out. Again, their information will be linked in the description box down below. You can make a tea time online. I think there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. So you could even call the day of, and there's oftentimes depending upon um, what the what the busy you know busyness is but it's pretty nice you can just get in yeah they do a good job of getting you on the course yeah kind of even with a kind of a full t-sheet donnie and and his whole staff do a good job at sneaking you in so if you dig today's episode please hit the thumbs up button smash that red subscribe button if you head out to wedgewood tell them that pj mikey sent you and with that we'll catch you next week guys bye